Good morning, my dear and wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ. Here I am back again. I thank God for another day that he's given me some strength in my body and strength in my soul again. I pray he's, he's dealing so wonderfully with you. I know we're all at that stage where life is becoming very, very difficult. Many of you have so many more issues than I can even imagine. And you're soldiering on like beautiful, beautiful children of God. But times are tough. And I pray for you daily. And I pray that you will find the peace and strength to go on. But I want to encourage you more than anything. I want to encourage you to remain with the Lord. Don't give up on him because he will not give up on you. Times are, we are time for the rapture. No matter what anyone tells you, I cannot tell you the day, the hour, but I know it is time. Remember that vision I had of the door and on the door it said, Time for rapture, prepare the bride. I don't know how long we have, but we are the bride that must prepare. And we must bring as many in through that door as we can bring them. And the door is Jesus Christ. So it's time to prepare. And we don't, when a bride is getting ready, she doesn't just suddenly say, oh, well, I've got all of this done. I've only got that left. I'll have a break. No, she gets in there and she keeps going until it's all done. And lo and behold, it's time to be married. So we have to be diligent. There will be some gold diggers in amongst us that think they can be there. They're there for the wrong reason. But God knows your heart. The gold diggers are like, remember there was a story of um, Simon, he was a magician, remember the magician, and he saw the apostles going around and healing, he had done trickery, he had done magic, magic is real, right, it's not all trickery, some magic is real because it's using the power of the demonic forces, so he was doing legitimate miracles. But they weren't godly miracles. It was for deception's sake. He saw the power of the true power of God and he wanted it for himself and he came in and yes, I believed, he did believe that that power was true. It was more powerful than his own. He wanted the power and he tried to by the power. He was a gold digger. He wanted to be part of them, not for the sake of Jesus, but for the sake of his continued um, relevance and importance in the community. And there are those that are, are doing that today. You see them on the videos and on the television. These people that claim to be, but they're doing everything wrong because they're not genuine they don't love Christ but they think they can get their way into heaven by doing all these things it doesn't work that way you don't get the glory of God by lying <laughs> and so many think they can go when they're they're doing that they're doing it as an escape yes it is an escape but it's an escape to be with God Jesus, if you don't love Jesus, that escape won't help you because you still have to be judged. It's only through love that many sins are covered. The love of Christ, if you love Jesus, you are covered. If you're doing it all without love, it's filthy rags, remember? Well, you know that, I know that, but we have to stay alert because there are those out there trying to deceive the body of Christ. 
Don't be deceived, it's not flashy. Humble is the way. Jesus humbled himself. He could have come on the world like a Kenneth Copeland or a, a Joel Olestein or whatever their names are. He could have come like a, a Billy Graham and, and made big presentations. I'm not saying Billy Graham was a bad man. No, but Jesus didn't do it that way. He didn't do flashy, big, big um, auditoriums. He didn't fly around on jets. He walked. He didn't promise riches on earth. He promised riches in heaven. He didn't promise an easy life here. He promised a hard life here. Because if you love him, the world hated him. The world will hate you. So Jesus didn't come with flashy, join me and, and you're on the earthly bandwagon. It was join me, the earth will hate you. But you will come and be with me forever. So the gold diggers will be sought out because they were really after earthly and just an escape from the troubles. And yes, they want rapture, but they want it to escape what they're causing here. But it doesn't work that way, and you and I know that. So Simon went at it for the wrong reason. We have to set our heart on the Lord our God. Jesus our God, manifest on earth, is the uniter. He said he will reunite us with the Father. And He is preparing a place for us, and He will come and receive us. Some of us are blessed like my mum, and He came to the house and He personally picked her up and took her home when it was her time ten years ago. Ten and a half now. And some of us, we're looking for that great big party on the cloud. But however he comes, he will come for us because he is truth. But will you have troubles? Yes, my darlings, you will. But see it all as glory. And you wonder, well, why? Why does it have to be like this? The very moment Satan knew that he was doomed, that he failed in his coup in heaven. He hated humanity with a vengeance and his vengeance is poured out daily. Some he tricks by being kind to them but those he can't reach by kindness. He does cruelty but even the very beginning he set husband and wife against God. Then he set their first children, one against the other, the one of, that would carry the line of the seed of woman, was killed by the one that wouldn't. Satan entered into Cain and the first murder occurred. Then God raised up another son, Seth. And through him and every time a new one that was born to become part of the lineage of Jesus Christ, an enemy was raised up with them. Just think back, just go to as far as Abraham. Abraham, his own brother, up in Haran, even though he brought out the, the girls to wed, the brother's family were jealous of the riches and tried to trick them, remember? And when Abram had his children, the first child to be born was enemy. 
and he would be a violent man. His name was Ishmael, and he was born to be the enemy. Satan brought that out first through the disobedience of Sarah and Abram. They were told to wait on God, but they didn't. They did it themselves. That was just like Satan to Eve. Do this. Don't you? God didn't mean that. He meant this. And he didn't mean it for the right reason. So they came up with their own plan. And it ended in disaster. Then when Isaac was born, if you go back through Genesis... And you look at what happened the same year that Isaac was born. Who else was born? That was the very same year that Moab and Benami were born. The Ammonites and the Moabites to be the enemies of Israel to this day. They were to be the enemies to this day. Then when Jacob was born, remember there were two in the womb. Jacob was the one that was to have the anointing. But who came out, who stuck their hand out first to have the rope tied on it, the ribbon tied on it, Esau. So that even though Jacob came out first, remember that, Jacob actually, God had Jacob come out of the womb first, but because Esau had the ribbon, he was called the firstborn, but he did not come out first. That was the devil making plans. So Esau came out and was given the inheritance that Jacob was supposed to have, but God made sure that Esau handed over his inheritance back because it was never his in the first place. God righted always the wrongs of Satan. And Esau was the enemy born the same time. He became the enemy. And all of his tribes, the Edomites, all of those tribes became the enemy one for Christ is born, one for the enemy or two for the enemy. Always the enemy was bringing out his own to counteract what God had planned. And this went on right throughout history. So is it any wonder that today, surrounding that one tribe of people in Israel, there are so many enemies because they all came from those tribes and is it any wonder that you have so many enemies because you every time a believer is born Satan already has plans in place that's why we need God because God will give us the strength to carry on and he will make our path straight. Keep with the Lord. Be under his yoke. Let him take all your burdens because your burdens are light when they're placed on the Lord. When you come to the Lord with love and not with what can you do for me, God? But you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul. You are given the ability to love others, even those that hate you. And it sometimes is hard to love someone that hates you. But what I've what I do, and I'm, I'm by no means a measure, and I have not always done this. I have held great hatred in my heart in my younger years. Um, 
I didn't think it was hatred. I thought it was just anger. But that's hatred. Jesus said that's that's hatred. When I see somebody that's done something wrong to me, unjust, my mind goes to what God has shown me that heaven and hell are true. And I think to myself, yes, that person was absolutely horrible to me or to someone I loved. But do I want that person to go forever into hell, knowing what hell is? And instantly my heart says no. Even for them, I don't want, you've heard the saying, I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go there. It is true. You don't want your worst enemy to go there. And that's how you can forgive doesn't mean you forget God forgets yes but we still have to live in a world with these people so we have to still be aware of what they may do so it would be foolish to forget the actions but we forget the anger yes we forget the anger and we prepare ourselves that they can't do it again we don't give the enemy the options, but we continually love them that they are found to be saved. We are here to help others, to save them through the love of Christ. When they see us, the number of people that were saved throughout history not because someone preached to them, but because someone lived a life of faith to death. In the Roman arenas, when the Christians were tied to stakes and ripped apart by animals and they still sung to Christ, still glorified God, in the end, they had to stop doing it because the people were converting. What is this strength they have for their God? Why are they not afraid of death? Because the Romans were terrified of death. To them, that was the worst thing that could happen. And here were these believers in Jesus who for them, yes, they, they were bodily frightened, but they were spiritually strong and faithful and that strength through all their tribulations gave faith to others and many joined many many became Christians in the face of adversity when you keep the faith in Christ not selling out like a gold digger would to get benefit they sought no benefit and they would be we will see them they will be among those that raised up when Jesus brings us home we will see these great great saints men don't make saints a preacher can't say oh this one did a, this 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 on our checkbook they're a saint and then you find out later they were actually quite wicked people man doesn't make saints god makes saints the faithful are saints saints weren't dead people given sainthood when when the apostles were talking about the saints he was talking about those living amongst them you are the saints. You, if you trust in the Lord, if you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul and spirit, if everything about you loves the Lord, you are a saint. And Jesus Christ is coming for the saints. And he will rescue you. 
That's what hapotso is. It's a snatching away from what is to come. Don't let anyone pull your heart down. We don't know when. He said, I come soon, soon and quickly. Those words in the Greek are, oh, I don't remember. I've said it before, but my mind, I've had a few little um, issues recently with with things going on here. Sorry about that. So words and that aren't as good as they were. But I think it was something like taco or tacos or something, which meant like, you know, the tachometer on your car that tells you how the velocity that you're going. That's what the word meant. It's a, a burst of sudden velocity. When it comes, it's going to come Everything's going to happen really, really, really quickly. So if you're wondering, we have this, the book of Revelation, and it's got all of these things that are going to happen. There's going to be this, then this, then this, then this. And it sounds like it should take decades to go through it. But no, that's the soon. That's the, it will happen quickly. All of those things are going to be Tacos, they're going to be quickly, one after the other, or all together in a big burst almost. It comes so quickly. It's like you won't see it coming, and then suddenly it's there and it's over with. Think of the last seven years and how there seems to have been a lot going on, but anything like the book of Revelation... That is going to be like a whirlwind with one thing after another. That's how we know we're not in it. It hasn't started yet. Things aren't that quick. We're in a lull. We're in the eye. But we're in the eye of the whirlwind of the time of sorrows. When we get out, so there'll be another little whirlwind that will lead up to the Great Tribulation. It could be Ezekiel's war. I don't know. There has to be something that brings them into the need of an urgent contract, a covenant of many to stop the war and give Israel peace. They're not in peace now. There must be a peace that appears lasting there must be a peace in which Israel feels it doesn't need its borders anymore. It doesn't need, because everyone's come into agreement, to open them up to the destruction that Satan has in mind. But God has told us before. But we personally, my darlings, we go first. If you are ready, if the bride is ready, get yourself ready. Steal up all of your heart that you can be ready put your shield on love the lord and step into his grace let his grace lead you for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he that believes shall be saved be saved my loves well perfect timing my darlings i must go dad's up in his He's just had his shower and he's ready to start his day. So I'll love you. I'll leave you. God bless you all. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace and help you to ready yourself for his soon appearing. Don't let this world pull you down because the Lord is about to raise you up. God bless you. I love you, but he loves you so much more. Amen. See you soon, here or there, preferably there. And I will see you soon. God bless you all.